Okay, I think in part one I talked about the fact that I was going to digitise the body first because that's underneath the head. Um, and then the ears, the un inner ear and then the outer ear and then the face. So it's always a good idea to try and digitise in the order that you plan to stitch if you can. It's not the end of the world if you get it out of order because you can reorder the stitch order. Um, but in the older versions, you then have to manually move all the start and end points. In version 9, we do have in the edit toolbar, expand that out, we have a apply closest join button now so we can reapply the closest join after we've reordered objects if necessary so it is a bit easier in version 9 but all the uh, um, it's not the be all and end all as I said you can reorder your stitch order and sort out your start and end points in the older versions as well okay so without further ado let's get on and do some digitizing so the body I want just in a step fill, um, it'll be a closed object because it's going to be a fill and I'm going to choose a colour and I'm choosing light orange 47. If you've, it depends on whether you're doing this to send to somebody else, about, um, whether you worry too much about the colours um, and you can watch my um, videos on thread charts if you want to assign particular threads to your colours but if you're just doing it for yourself you can just embroider uh, you know use whichever cotton you want so long as you've got changes of colour and some rough idea what the colours should be um, so that you can actually get a stop between the colours so you can change your thread um, okay so I'm zoomed in a little bit more and I'm going to go to digitize and a closed object and I'm going to start here under the ear. I'm going to create a little bit of an overlap because I, these are quite, especially the body is quite a large object um, so the pull compensation probably won't be enough um, to prevent gaps so I always overlap a little bit. Only a couple of millimeters is all that you need and I'm just making a very simple shape by right clicking around this curve you can see I've got quite a big gap between my clicks here because it's a big sweeping curve. Now I'm coming down to a little tight curve so I'm going to put a few more clicks in to get smoothly around that curve and this one here. Now I'll zoom in here um, and I'll put a little left click there because I just want to define that toe there and there's probably another toe there and How many toes do rabbits have? Anyway, the, the foot goes off into under the body, but we'll um, right click there for a curve and doesn't really matter how many toes I put on him. <laughs> uh, left click there and I'm just coming this short distance, so I'll left click there and then I'm coming back down here again. So I'm going to come around, left click there, left click there. Yeah, I think it's four. Um, I'll put a left click there and just curve that there. Put a left click here because I'm starting the next foot. If you don't like the shape, you can reshape here afterwards. Only three of his toes are showing on this side, but anyway. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about that hump. Oh, that might be his fourth toe, actually. So we'll put a little hump there. Now we're getting to a bigger sweeping curve. Now this image has actually got parts missing because it was so um, pale on this side that it hasn't actually picked up any colour. So I'm just going to guess here where it goes. And when I get up to this part here at the face and, che and the cheek here and the body, I'm just going to arbitrarily choose halfway between as the point where they overlap. And then I'm just going to curve around, just overlapping that face slightly. Now, you won't know if you've done that enough, 100% um, sure, until you test so. So... Um, and 
experience, the more you digitise, the more you'll understand how much you need to overlap. It has to do with the stitch angle as just as much as it does with um, how much you overlap too. So there's lots of factors that determine that measurement. But, you know, two to three millimetres should be enough. Enter. And I'll go to True View so you can see that object. Okay, so I now have this object here. It's, it's pretty solid and we can't really see the definition of the feet and legs, but we'll do that with an outline so that it um, looks better. All right, so then on to the ears and the um, inner ear. And so I'll need to choose a different colour. So let's go to um, a pale, oh, pale pink, soft pink. And just by clicking on the colour and come up to the inner ear. Now I can't see where that inner ear goes under here anymore because I've got this stitching here. Depending on your design, you may be able to get away with just um, showing going out of true view which in this case I can see through there. I've got my outline showing. Or you may need to hide the stitches and then you're just left with an outline which is fairly faint there because it's the colour of the stitching and it blends quite well with my image. But I can see it. It runs down here and you can see it more clearly across here. So I know how much I'm overlapping there. And this is the outer ear coming across here. So I need to come into here. I'm going to left click here and I'm going to right click, right, and I might left click even there because it's not, it's going to be stitched over. It doesn't need to be a really smooth curve. And at this point in time, I'm just coming up here, overlapping the outer ear till I get to the point where the outer ear stops and the inner ear continues which is probably about there and then I can just come around the edge of the inner ear now one thing I didn't do which I should have done and I hope you all remember to do it now here I'm going to overlap this body part and come back to the beginning of the ear, enter, um, and I've got the stitches hidden so you can't see, so I'll just bring them back to true view. Okay, so that's the inner ear there. Um, it's a good idea, which I didn't do, is to right click on your image and lock it. That way you can't accidentally move the image halfway through digitizing. It's sometimes, depending on the image and the digitizing you're doing sometimes when you're trying to select something you accidentally select the image and move that so that will stop that okay um, I'll go ahead and do the other inner ear I'll just pause the video and come back okay the other inner ear didn't actually come down over any part of the body so that's just come to here um, so I did that in exactly the same way just clicking around now let's start with the outer ears um, so we need to go back to our original colour. We know our original colour because it's got a little blue square in the top, signifying that it was a, use, a colour you've used. So I can just click on that colour and my black box will go around that now. I'm still in the closed object with the fill, so we're all good. So um, again, I'm going to hide the stitches. I can see the outline just faintly. So I need to overlap. And I need to overlap the body part down here. So let's start. And I need to uh, go a little bit into the head so that I don't get a gap there either. So I'm going to start about here. And this is my overlap of the inner ear. So I'm not worrying too much about those fluffy bits. I'm just trying to get a smooth curve that's going to overlap. And I'll show you the overlap in a minute when I've done it. That's a very faint line <laughs> that I'm seeing there. Now here I need to stop right on the line. So I'm going to left click on that line and then 
come back down the outside. So the outside is a bit easier because I don't have to try and see that faint line. Now I'm coming into the head, so I'm going to overlap that there. So I left click there, and then I'm going to right click, right click, right click, right click. I might left click there so that it goes across the head there. The eyelashes are going to go in here too, so they'll cover over the top as well. So enter. And let's have a look at that in True View. Oh, I need to unhide the stitches and go to True View. Okay, so he's got his outer ear. Now you can have a look at here and do you like the shape? If you want to see your overlap clearly, the best way is to hide the image and then go out of True View and you can actually see how much you've overlapped. If you've got your outlines turned on, you'll see the outlines in dark when you're showing the stitches so that makes it even clearer you can see the distance between those two outlines is quite pronounced okay till we get up the top um, it's a little bit thinner here so I could in fact reshape here so let's reshape the inner ear to come in this way a little bit more so I'll select that inner ear and reshape it so this is the reshape button up here and Okay, why didn't I get the reshape on there? I'm sure I selected. Let me just, oh, maybe I selected the wrong one. This one, reshape. There we go. Um, so I can just grab this node, hover over it till you get that cross here, left click and drag a little bit. That's made my gap a little bit better there. All right, select, click off, and click on the little show bitmap to bring back your image so I will do the same for the outer ear over there and then I'm going to digitize the face so I'll come back after I've done the outer ear and we'll do the face okay so he's starting to look a bit weird now but we'll get there right well let's do the face so we'll zoom right in and um, I'm going to just hide the stitches this time because um, no, actually, I'm just going. To, I'm going to show the stitches, but I'm just going to go into True View because I get that black line around the outside, which makes it a bit easier to see where I'm overlapping. Okay, so let's start here in the middle of the head. So I'm going to get my closed object. I've got my color and my stitch, of course, and I'm going to left click here and right click here, and as you can see, I'm overlapping that outline. So it's actually easier to see with this color. Now I'm going to left click right where the ear meets the face here. And then I'm going to right click to get into this curve around the eye area. And then right click around his cheek. Making it a fairly smooth line because, as I said before, parts of him are missing on this side. Now we need our edges to meet up here, so I'm going to left click there. Um, and then right click. Now I don't think that's going to look actually very good, so I'm going to undo that. You can, if you change your mind about what sort of click you're going to use, you can use a backspace, and that will free you up to redo that click. I think I will actually do a right click here and cross over that body. It does. It, that would actually make the cheek come out and around the body. That's a better look. So I might. I can reshape the um, body later if I want to. Now under here, I want to accentuate this part of his face as well. So a left click up here. I'm going to have to reshape that body left click up there and then a right click I'm going to keep the mouth in here as well so we'll right click right click right click right click I'm going to left click up there and then right click I just wanted to put a bit more shape in his um, face there 
because I did. <laughs> um, okay, and I'm overlapping the ear. I'm going to left click about here and right click around there. So I've probably got a bit too much overlap there. I can fix that later too. And Right click around there and enter. Okay, true view. All right, so I've got that bit of a jowl going on, which is what I wanted to try and get. Now you can see that both of these are going at the same stitch angle, so they're going to blur into each other at this point in time, but we will have an outline. So the problem though with all your stitching going at 45 degrees is the pull is going to be in this direction more and more the more stitching you've got at 45 degrees so it can distort the shape so sometimes it's a good idea to play around with the stitch angles we'll do that in a minute but I just want to fix those two little areas where I change my mind about the shape so I'll go at, out of true view again and I'll go to I'll select the body because that's what I want to change and I'll go to the reshape tool and just here where I went up here into this little peak with the jowls I need to make the body go up there too so I'm going to make I'm going to select this node here and I'm going by clicking on it and then I'm going to press my space bar which will turn it into a square node and I'm going to take that up so it's just above that peak now I can Put another round node in here by right clicking on the line and bring that down and that can come down a little bit too and this one can come down that's better and same on this side then I, I'm actually going to put my those round nodes are in a good place so I'm going to left click on the line to get a square node which is a change direction node and just drag that up up here I had a little bit too much overlap with this piece here so that was the outer ear so I'm going to select the outer ear two inner ears first outer ear and reshape that one and I can just bring that node in a little bit okay that's good enough for now. All right, so let's go back to True View. And as I said, we could actually select, click off, change the stitch angles in these. I quite like the ears going in opposite directions. This one's got the 45 degree angle going in the default direction this way, but I'd like this inner ear to be going 45 degrees that way. So let's select that first inner ear again and go to the reshape tool and we've got our little um, angle tool there and we can just bring that round so that the stitching is going this way just makes a little bit of a difference and also the stitching coming across this way from the ear um, will actually um, be in an opposite direction so it will really define that area as well um, it's a not a, an exact representation of the actual stitch out but it's the closest they can do so don't worry that this looks like a totally different stitch now it will stitch out nicely okay the stitching coming across this way um, is nice coming against that one so let's see if we can change this one so that's the second outer ear now you can stay in the reshape tool and tab through to the later objects or shift tab to go back to earlier objects so I'm going to go tab which brings me to the second inner ear then tab again that's the first outer ear and tab again the second outer ear and find the stitch angle on this one somewhere because my rabbit is browny orangey it's hard to find the orange there it is <laughs> the orange angle tool but there it is so I'm going to swing that round to come across this way as well all right now the face, you could have that, it depends on our facial features. Um, I'm going to put it vertical. I didn't actually in my first original one, but now that I think about it a bit more, I'm going to put the stitching vertical and horizontal on the, on the body. Okay, so we'll select that so I can go tab and that will come to the face. 
can find my angle tool again, there it is, and bring that up to 90. There we go. Um, and it just gives a bit more definition between the different objects. The body will go, well, that's right at the beginning. So sometimes it's easier just to select it and then click on your reshape tool again and find that angle and bring that to zero. Okay, so we've got quite a bit of long stitching across here, um, this bit shorter. So there shouldn't be too much of a problem here between these, these two parts or even here. But over this side here, you may get the, because this is such a long distance, this may pull in a bit too much. I've got um, a video called When Pull Compensation Isn't Enough, and I will put that in the description below. So you can in increase your pull compensation first. If that's not enough, then, um, and you won't know until you do your test. So, um, and I've got videos on pull compensation as well. Um, Increase that first, and if that doesn't solve your issue, and sometimes you don't want to increase the pull compensation because it is going to increase on this side too. So um, sometimes you just manually reshape to get rid of the gap. 